please welcome Michael Trussler. So I'm Michael. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Plant Miner, which is, a, I suppose, a disruptive marketplace in the plant equipment rental space in the construction industry. So we connect searches with suppliers, much like car sales connect searches of cars with suppliers of cars. We connect searches of equipment rental industry. I mean, equipment, concreters, subcontractors, anything you like to a whole heap of suppliers. Uh, I'm just put a few definitions up here, which I got off the top page of Google about a couple of the uh, my points that I'm speaking on tonight. But they they seem true to me because disrupting is changing the traditional way that an industry operates, especially in a new and in a new and effective way, which is disruption. Inspiration to me and Google is to make someone else want to do something. And then engagement is occupy or attract someone's attention or a business's attention uh, to do something as well. So what is Plant Miner? I think I've just explained that before. It's a disruptive online construction marketplace. We are disrupting a $355 billion industry a year. So I'm a civil engineer by trade. I worked up in Murrumbah for two years for a private civil construction company and had to procure hundreds of pieces of equipment, subcontractors, etc., for all our job sites. And it was a shocking process. I had to get three apples for apples quotes for each piece of equipment. I see people in the construction industry nodding their heads. You go out to market, you get phone calls back with prices, you get emails, you get text messages, and it's just a, it was a horrendous experience that I had for two years, which kind of made me want to do something about it. I think it really tweaked me when I bought a Toyota Hilux off car sales in about 12 minutes. It was an amazing experience. So early 2012, the idea was born, called my now business partner, um, who's down in Sydney, who's a techie guy, and I wasn't. Hey mate, what do you reckon of this idea? We, for six months until July 2012, every evening put together business plans, uh, financials, etc., etc., which we don't, we actually looked back on them a couple of months ago and it's nothing like uh, what we originally wrote, which is quite funny. <laughs> but then in July 2012, we actually quit our jobs, thought that it, this was an absolute goer, uh, and we went about kind of pitching to investors, which we were reasonably successful in doing, actually very successful. We actually landed about $850,000 of somebody's faithful money on our idea, kind of pre-revenue, pre-ABN even, which was uh, pretty exciting for us. So we, I suppose, in the deal, got to use a portion of his boardroom and his accounting, etc. So we kind of set up a petition in there and me and my business partner kind of got a, an Indian outsource agency to create a list of 20,000 suppliers in Australia and me and I employed a couple of mates kind of until May 2013 and we actually made 20,000 phone calls. And that's me as well as everyone else. So we, we averaged about 160 a day each, uh, <laughs> which once you get into it, it's not too bad. <laughs> and selling a idea or a website that wasn't even, we launched in May 2013, so for several months we were selling this website that wasn't even a website yet, but geez, we sold the idea well. And we actually, the uproar, not the uproar, but the, I suppose, upheaval and people that were interested in it gave us and our very faithful investors was burning through about 150 grand a month of his money. <laughs> uh, kind of realisation to uh, keep going. So we launched a website in May 2013 with a lot of nice bugs eight employees, we kind of moved out of his boardroom a little bit because he'd be having big meetings with NAB Bank or whatever and he'd have eight blokes and a couple of very, very good females as well who are actually better on the phones <laughs> uh, in his boardroom so he kicked us out for a little bit. So, and that was fun but everyone was on free trials because we are all saying to them, there's this new website, come on here for a free trial, it'll be great. 
So we kept burning through cash and then July 2013 hit when all the free trials ended and you actually have to become a salesperson because you're asking these suppliers, that's how we monetize, you charge the supply marketplace some money and <laughs> luckily enough we tricked a few of them <laughs> into, <laughs> into paying us. But that, that's startup land, you absolutely have just got to go hard, you've got to and you've got to be passionate about your business. And if you're passionate enough about it, people actually believe that and they take that up and they, uh, et cetera. Like a year down the track, if they haven't received any leads or what have you, they stop believing. But luckily enough, it's become better than that. So July 2013, I think we made $100,000 in sales, which I think we'd told our investor the year before that we'd do lots more than that or what have you, but that's fine. And that's the startup land as well as not hitting numbers. But that was a great kind of moment for us and a, a really exciting one. So we had kind of 10 employees. Um, we kept kind of burning through cash and struggling along. And then the business actually started to gain some great momentum. And what brought about that momentum was we actually moved out of a very corporate investor's office and we actually moved into my house in Cannon Hill. So, you can imagine in a corporate environment, it was like there was accountants there, etc., and kind of like, not so much like this, but everyone was segmented off and there was no vibe. And my, we, were, we were on $100,000 of sales and not kind of growing. And my business partner and I said, we've got to do something here, otherwise we're never ever going to be able to raise more capital. So, startup story again, kicked all of my roommates out, bought plastic tables and chairs from Bunnings, got our Mac laptops in there, put some whiteboards up for KPIs, and we ran a really, really awesome business out of my house from about November 2013 to our next capital raise in May 2014. Which, and we were all together, you could hear each other on the phones, the, the atmosphere and the vibe was absolutely unbelievable, and that kind of grew the business really, really well to the point that kind of July came around and then till June the next year, we did 467% growth. Raising $2 million capital helps because that lets you pay people and not worry about kind of where the road is gonna end so much, but that, it was kind of phenomenal growth. I think we were maybe second quickest growing tech business in Australia um, and 100 employees and kind of is going very very well but geez there are some some big difficulties in going from 10 15 employees for all my mates to a hundred and the business blowing up and it's and we're still going through that and it's it's a very difficult thing to do but I really think that the way I started by making the phone calls every day and you i tell that story to every single employee and i tell them that we're in a nice office now but i used to sleep on the floor in a room in my house and then i used to fold the mattress up so our three website developers could work in my room and like when but when people understand that and they look you in the eye and they they appreciate that all 100 of our employees now absolutely know that story and have bought into the I suppose what we're trying to do, which is actually really exciting. So if we kind of keep moving on, consolidation and development, you can't, well you can, but we're not, you can't grow at 467% year on year, otherwise you're gonna be Australia's most highly valued company. But we'll probably do about 200% growth this year and hopefully continue that into the next year. But other things about disruption as well, we're disrupting an industry, but we also are disrupting ourselves and our business. So we're three years old now, and our business is shifting in a way that is disrupting our old revenue model. So in three, this is how quickly things are coming at us, that if you're a business owner or somebody in any kind of importance in any business, it's coming at you quicker than you can know and you really have to read the play early. And we kind of saw that 
the subscription marketplace is a very hard one to, up, uh, I suppose, keep happy, etc. And we're changing revenue model, which is going to, I suppose, eat up the other side of business. So that's kind of another thing I've learned along the way is you've got to almost be looking a long time ahead instead of just down below you because disruption is coming at every single business, in every single industry, in every single vertical, whether you like it or not. And I really think the ones who embrace that will prosper even in hard times, but the ones that don't will really, really struggle. So we've got just gone through our third capital raising as well, kind of from March till last month it took to kind of get the, the consortium of investors together. And that's kind of put us in great stead to be able to not, I suppose, look at our bank account and see how much money we've got left every single month, but to give us a great runway to kind of keep continuing um, our journey. So what we want to do in the future is some huge product development, keep on disrupting the construction industry, keep on inspiring our people and never stop kind of building engagement, which the lead funnel that we go through and the consultants we get and the amount of money we spend on converting that lead funnel which is talked about in the last talk, which is quite funny, is huge. But, and that's kind of the end, but I just, I'll instill a couple of, I suppose, things I've learned along the way as well, if there's any expiring entrepreneurs out there. And a, a couple of things that I would do differently over the last four years is probably do as much due diligence on your investors as they do on you, because in the startup world, they are putting their money and faith in you and they are your true, true business partner and, and, and partner in life. And you're gonna go through so many ups and downs, you're gonna go through so many board meetings where you haven't hit numbers and so many board meetings where you've hit numbers times three and they even wonder why you're doing that. But try and find the right partner who believes in you and be honest with them and say that this is gonna be a really rough ride and if you're still happy to put your money on in, we're happy to work as hard as possible to get a return on that. So that's kind of doing due diligence on investor. Uh, some other ones are kind of potentially don't listen to American venture capitalists, etc., telling you how fast you should grow and how much money you should be burning and kind of learn about your investment environment in Australia, I think a real um, trap that we went through during from March to August and the year before that was we talked to so many VCs in America and they're like, yeah, we love Plant Miner, we love it, but we just don't think you guys are growing quick enough and we think that your cash burn, you're not aggressive enough, you've got to up it, but we'll give you 20 million bucks during the capital raise, don't worry about that. So then you have more conversations and you meet Australian tech investors who are very, very conservative, and every single meeting we went to, they were like, you guys are growing too quickly, your cash burn is too high, and when you start hearing those things, it's a, it's a scary prospect, because you kind of don't know which way to go. We, we ended up going with kind of family fund institutional investors in Australia, who are on the same path as us, and hopefully can get us through to the next stage, which is, I don't know, there are a larger capital raise or potentially listing on the ASX, which would be exciting. But yeah, I don't, that's our story. I don't know if anyone got anything out of it. <laughs> <laughs>